Hi, everybody. In place of our in-person lecture meeting, I wanted to go ahead and give you a little bit of an introduction and conversation and uh, provide some detail about the technique that you're going to be doing today. What you're going to be doing, sorry, this week in lab is really not so different from when we did ion exchange chromatography. You'll use a wash buffer, you'll use wash buffers with increasing salt concentrations, and you're going to run them over a column. One thing that's different about the column that we're going to be using this week is this column, for one, is blue. And that pigment is an indicator of the immobilized molecule that is on this column. What we're going to be using for affinity chromatography is a substance known as Cibercon Blue. And I wanted to share with you all, first of all, the experiment that we're doing. Let me pull that back up. And then, there we go. So here's the experiment. Here's the worksheet that you're going to be filling out. There's a couple of questions about Cibercon Blue. And then at the bottom of it, there's lots of data tables. So basically, the last five pages are data tables. Now, the procedure is effectively the exact same. The only difference is the column that we're using. So you're going to be given a sample of or a sample that should contain lactate dehydrogenase. And then you're going to try to capture that lactate dehydrogenase on your column, wash away nonspecific binding proteins, and then elute lactate dehydrogenase. Now, with that in mind, I wanted to share with you all a paper and just kind of give you an introduction of uh, Cibercon Blue as a um, as a molecule used for affinity chromatography. So just one moment, I'm gonna pause this. So this paper right here is from 1976, and it was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, also known as PNAS. So this is a pretty high impact journal, and this journal is, uh, um, well, it's the, I think it's, Two times a month, the National Academy of Sciences in the United States um, publishes articles. And these are the, the research articles. So this published in 76 is titled, Binding of Cibricon Blue F3GA to Proteins Containing the Dinucleotide Fold. So this is a, a kind of a foundational uh, study of, well, proteins that have this structural element known as a dinucleotide fold, they will bind this molecule known as Cibercon Blue F3GA. Okay, so effectively, if a protein has that dinucleotide fold, it's going to bind to this. Does every single protein have a dinucleotide fold? No, not at all. Now, in this article, it goes on to say, we have recently demonstrated that blue dextran covalently attached to sephiros can be used to prepare an affinity column specific for those proteins whose nucle nucleoside phosphate binding sites are constructed of the super secondary structure called the dinucleotide fold. Since the aromatic rings of nucleoside phosphates, such as NAD and ATP, are inserted into apolar pockets when bound to these proteins, we anticipate that binding of the chromophore of blue dextran Cibercon Blue F3GA at the nucleoside phosphate site should produce a red shift in the absorption spectrum of the dye. Okay, so let's think about this for a moment. We have a molecule, this blue dextran, binding and causing a red shift, causing a, basically a color change in the absorption spectrum. Have we seen something that binds a chromophore, a pigmented molecule, and causes a color change. We absolutely have with the Bradford assay. So when we talk about the Bradford assay, we're talking about something that's soluble, solution, a solution that binds to a protein and then a color changes. So this Cibercon Blue is actually fairly similar to that in the sense that Cibercon Blue is a chromophore that binds to a protein. Now, 
the important thing about this, and what I really want you to understand, is that a protein with a nucleoside phosphate binding site can bind to Sivercon blue. So another way to think about that is if a protein binds to a nucleotide, it can also bind to Sivercon blue. So let's think about proteins that bind to nucleotides. And let's think in an extreme. Does every single protein or does every single enzyme bind to a nucleotide? No, not at all. If we take something like hemoglobin, what's hemoglobin's primary substrate or its, its ligand? Oxygen. Can hemoglobin or does hemoglobin, he, he, sorry, hemoglobin have any affinity for ATP? Potentially. If it does, it's merely a coincidence. Now, another protein that binds to something like ATP, hexokinase the first enzyme in glycolysis. Can hexokinase bind to ATP? Absolutely. So can hexokinase bind to Sivercon blue? Probably because of the fact that it binds to, uh, because of the fact that it binds to ATP, okay? Now, another molecule, lactate dehydrogenase. Lactate dehydrogenase's primary substrate is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, or NAD. Nicot nicotinamide, okay, we're talking about a nucleotide. So if lactate dehydrogenase binds to NAD, can it bind to Sivercon blue? Yeah, more than likely it can. So let's say that we have a mixture of hexokinase, a protein that binds ATP. We have hemoglobin, a protein that chances are slim that it binds to ATP, but it does bind to O2, and lactate dehydrogenase. We have got those three proteins. Will all three of those proteins bind to Sivercon blue? Probably not. Two of them will. Hexokinase and lactate dehydrogenase probably will bind to uh, Sivercon blue, but not all three of them. Okay, so if that's the case, then what can we do with that information? Well, if we're trying to purify lactate dehydrogenase, and let's go back to this mixture of these three proteins. If we can take this mixture and get rid of one of those proteins, is our enzyme lactate dehydrogenase 100% pure? It's not but it's 33% more pure. So have we enriched for our enzyme? Absolutely. Sivercon blue, by selecting for proteins that bind nucleotides, well, it does have some level of selectivity. Does it completely clean a sample? It doesn't. So is it perfect? No, it's not. But Sivercon blue is a compound that is very effective for selecting certain types of proteins. Now, when you think about chromatography, what we're doing is we did ion exchange chromatography, and then separately, we are doing affinity chromatography. When you are trying to purify a protein, what you're going to do is going to do one technique, and then layer on top of that technique another technique, and then layer on top of that another one. So if you were trying to purify lactate dehydrogenase, chances are what you do is something like ammonium sulfate precipitation. After that ammonium sulfate precipitation, where maybe you've gotten your protein 10% more pure, then you do something like ion exchange chromatography, in which case you select for proteins with all the same charges. Then you do something like affinity chromatography. So now we've got three layers of purification where we're enriching for our protein each time. After that third level, that affinity chromatography, Let's say you said you, you did your ammonium sulfate and then you did ion exchange and you got only positively charged proteins. Then you said, all right, I'm going to do affinity chromatography. Now you've kind of selected even more. You said, now I only have proteins that have a positive charge and bind to a nucleotide. The next level would be something like gel filtration or size exclusion chromatography, where you're going to separate based on molecular weight. So when you're purifying a protein, 
it's not like one technique has to get rid of 95% of the proteins that are not yours. Instead, make these incremental improvements. You enrich 5% each time. And when you do that multiple rounds with different uh, purification techniques, you're going to get ultimately a protein sample that's very pure. So I'm gonna share this link with y'all. And what I want you to do, or I'm gonna share this uh, paper with y'all, what I want you to be familiar with is the abstract and this introduction right here. Sorry, I highlighted the entire. So basically this first column on the left, it's not highlighting correctly. Basically this portion that I've highlighted right here. I want you to be familiar with that because I might ask some quiz, quiz questions about that. All right, well, I hope you have a good one and I'll see you later.